Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim. I almost said Connor. <laughs> <Hello. Day. laughs> I know, I know, I'm, I'm terrible. Uh, we talk about <laughs> horror movies on this show and in this episode we are tackling Satan's Slaves, which is an Indonesian horror film, which is weird because I don't think I'd ever seen an Indonesian horror film before uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we've done two of them pretty much back to back. So that is that is odd. But yes, so we'll start spoiler free as we always do. We'll give you a warning in the middle before we go into spoilers. Uh, the premise of Satan's Slaves is that uh, we have this family uh, that has a the eldest daughter who's in her twenties. We have a teenage son and then two younger sons. And their mother is sick and dies at the start of the film. That is kind of the opening of the film is that she dies. And once she does pass on, uh, weird ghostly things start to happen around the house. And that is, that is kind of, kind of a, in terms of spoiler free, I yeah. think that's the, that's the gist I mean, of it. Yeah, essentially a haunted house movie. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I typically ask the question at the, here mm. at the start, so I, I shall do so. Tim... Did you enjoy Satan Slaves? Uh, I did. I absolutely loved this movie. I uh, I, I remember, you know, I'm a big, uh, you know, proponent of a uh, Shutter. So I remember, you know, I always look at their emails and stuff uh, that's that's coming out, and I remember them kind of making a big deal uh, when they're adding this to their catalog, and uh, nothing about it really stood out to me. Uh, but you know, this was another one where. Uh, I started to hear some good things like, uh, you know, I saw some like articles and, uh, you know, some uh, podcasts mention it in their end of the year list. So I was like, ah, let's give it a shot. And I was pretty blown away. Like, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say it necessarily uh, is doing anything like super new, you know, like it is you know, mostly a haunted house m- movie again. But uh, I just think what it does, it does really, really well. Like, uh, I like the characters. I think the scares are really good. It's not like, uh, you know, there isn't really any, like, cheap CGI or kind of stuff that makes you roll y- your eyes. I think it's just, you know, really simple, uh, you know, uh, scares. But, you know, it's all done really well. And I thought there's some legitimately creepy stuff. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> I really dug it. You're a bit more positive than me, Tim. I'll say, I'll say that. <laughs> okay. um, I I am kind of lukewarm on this one. Interesting. Okay. I'm lukewarm. I I would basically describe this movie as a combination of Hereditary and Veronica, which was a Spanish film we did okay. early last year. Um, See. I I think it's a combination of those two things, but I think both of those movies are better than this. Okay, see, I, I got uh, I, I didn't think of those. I got definite Conjuring vibes uh, off of it. Um, well, the reason why I got uh, Veronica vibes from it was because the dad, after the mum dies, basically pisses off and leaves the older sister like looking after her, her siblings. And that made me think of Veronica a little bit. Um, and obviously, I think there's some... I can't really say because it's all spoiler stuff, but uh, Hereditary's kind of where that plot goes in that movie. Okay. It made me, you know, I was, Fair. I was yeah. reminded of that in this as well. Um mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think the scares are okay. I have to admit, I'll, I was quite a few of them that I did think were a bit just typical, you know, loud noise, jump scare kind of stuff. Um, sure. You're yeah. right that there's no CG. Like, yeah, you're right in that. But it, it, it wasn't impressing me because it was mostly just... I think what I liked about it, I, I liked the, the first half probably more than the second half because I think mm. I liked the the characters a little bit. Especially, I, li- I liked how quickly they set up how the rela- relationship that the two youngest brothers had. Yeah, because. Totally. They had this whole thing where the the slightly older ones kind of like you know there's, there's a scene where he thinks he's seen something out the window in the in the cemetery or whatever, and he says to his younger brother who who's mute so he's using sign language. Mm-hmm. He's using sign language and he's saying, "Hey, do you want to come and sleep in my bed because you're probably scared?" And his younger brother basically sign language is back saying, "Nah, but you're scared. You mean?" Is it yeah. no? I'm not shut up, and they, you know, they go to be in bed. But it set up the relationship quite early on. Unfortunately, I think that gets lost over the course of the movie because of where the plot goes, and that kind of the bond isn't is there throughout the whole thing, and that was kind of thing. I I did think the story was kind of cliche in a lot of places. There was a lot of tropes. There was a lot of um, here's the character who knows about these things that they go and see. Yeah. Here's um, like the 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 idea that they're, they're having to talk about what's really going on and do, doing doing some research kind of and there was there was a lot of plot beats that felt just kind of like yeah 
This is the this is that part of the movie in one of these. Yeah, no, I, I think that's totally fair. Like, I again, I wouldn't say this is the uh, you know most unique movie. Like, uh, yeah, there is stuff that you know it, it's not like oh I've never seen that done before. I just think the the stuff you know at least for me like when I was watching it the stuff it that it does it it does well like uh, it, it is jump scary I'll give it that but I don't mind a good jump scare you know as long as it's you know done well like they didn't really feel cheap to me um you know I, I thought they were effective and uh, again it was nice that you know it was like a lot of practical stuff and the yeah like the it kept me interested all the way throughout like I never really felt uh you know like it, it dragged or anything like yeah I was you know, pretty hooked on the the story from the beginning. So uh, I, I feel what you're saying, but it definitely, it worked more for me just at least in terms no, of like, I mean, it's, it's well, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. I I think the, the other problem I had with it a little bit was the, the pacing was a little bit weird for me. I, okay. I felt like the characters kept like shit would hit the fan and something really bad would happen, and, you know, during the night and like all this stuff would happen where there'd be a ghost sighting or someone would nearly get killed or, in fact, there's a couple of examples in this movie where someone does get killed. There's, there's a couple, yeah. couple of deaths. Oh, yeah. and there's one really surprising one. <laughs> there, there is. The, 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 that is probably the best scene in the movie, actually. The, the really surprising death, which yeah. was really brutal, actually, uh, how, it was, how it was shot. <laughs> but I, I, kept, I kept feeling like the characters seemed to then go back to as if everything was normal the next day. Like, a lot. There was a, a lot That's, of t- times in the yeah. movie where it felt like we should be like getting more and more tense and the characters should be, feel, should be feeling more and more helpless and more and more like the walls are closing in on them because this thing's counting yeah. down. Because there is an element of the plot where they know that, that something's probably happening when we hit this day. There's like a kind of a, a countdown element yeah. to it. And for some reason, like it kept like deflating its own tension by every other thing going back to kind of normal for a little bit. Um, I, uh, for, for me, like, I, I still felt like a tension, but I, I do agree though. It didn't really seem like the characters were feeling it, which was kind of weird. Like, uh, I'll I'll agree with you that there was a couple of instances where it's like, yeah, why are these people just like, you know, hanging out in their room or something when, you know, clearly like really crazy stuff is like about to go down or they should at least, you know, not feel... It's, you know, very safe and comfortable at this point. Especially towards the end, there's like a, a big thing where the, the they have this really, really big, horrible night, and they're mm-hmm. going to just leave the house the next day, and they eventually they end up not being able to because of circumstances, and basically it gets to a point where the character's like, "Well, we might as well just go to bed because it's getting late." As, <laughs> as if there's nothing to be scared of, and I'm like, "Do you yeah. not remember how crazy last night got? Are you serious? Yeah, like, let's go to bed." <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, it, it just rang a little bit false for me. I, I, mean, I don't think it's bad. It, it's kind of in a, sure, a, yeah. a a lukewarm kind of. It's handled well enough. There's some decent mm-hmm. kind of moments and there's a couple of decent characters and stuff. But um, for for me, it was just just kind of because the ending as well didn't necessarily give me a whole lot in terms of uh, well satisfaction. I guess it it felt like it played out very straightforward uh, to me without any kind of like hook or twist or or kind of like, you know, it was almost like it told us what the movie was going to happen at the end quite early on, and then it just happened. Uh, well, I, I think I, I would disagree. I think there was a, well, I mean, at least for me, I think there was at least one surprising element. Uh, okay. But, I mean, I, I, we'll get to spoilers, spoilers, yeah, but yeah. Uh, but no, I, uh, I think maybe in general, too, uh, I might be a little more prone to like kind of like supernatural stuff like mm. like the way you like slashers a little more than me i i'm a, a bit more of a sucker for you know like ghosts and demons and stuff i think it also um, didn't help that i i knew you liked this quite a bit before i watched it and oh sure yeah <laughs> and i was kind of like starting it waiting for it to get good there was also some like weird plot elements as well um obviously it does factor in a little bit in one way but like there's this whole introduction scene that establishes that the mom who's dying was a was a musical performer and like had albums oh, yeah. and uh the, the you know the main character uh Rene, is going, going to try and like get some royalties that the, the road and it felt like I, I felt like more was going to come from this like element of the character and there is one like sure. cool thing that comes from it but it is it's, it's very kind of small comparatively speaking to in, t- in terms of how it functions in the plot rather than just being a cool thing from the like from the setup, if you will, yeah. 
Um, and I, I do think like coming so soon or uh, you know after Hereditary doesn't help it because there was a lot of comparisons I could make to that in terms of what, what's actually going on in the movie. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that, that's definitely fair. <laughs> I was like the, the uh, one thing I kept having trouble with, and I I feel bad because I kept ask, asking my my wife, but like I was having a uh, trouble like keeping the the family members straight because at first I uh, I guess I kind of just assumed the you know mother that was dying. I assumed that that was like uh, the grandma, and then I assumed that the because there's like you know Reedy like the you know main female character mm. she's uh you know she she's quite a bit older than her brothers so i assumed that she was like the wife of the dad and that the other kids were like their children or whatever so i kept getting confused with like oh wait a minute who's the mom who's a but that does actually end up being a, a plot point though why there is such like you know disparity in, in the ages uh and stuff yeah they're, they're all even list the kids are all spread out about six years so you've got 22 16 and eight or no. Is, <laughs> it, the, uh, is a shorter gap after that kid, but yeah, there's, yeah. A, re- there's a reason why the first two are six years apart. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, 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 it makes somewhat sense. Um, yeah. So, it is what it is. But yeah. Uh, so, I don't want to sound too harsh on it, because I, I think it's fine. Like, I, like it's, it's a fine movie. Um, it, it just didn't really do a whole lot for me either. It was, it was kind of an... A, 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 again, it's one of the things we talk about sometimes, where sometimes we are just kind of air on a movie, and it's not like... Yeah. It's, you know, it's not particularly not great, it's not particularly bad, yeah. it's just, like, you know, it is what it is, and yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't have a whole lot to say on it, which is, you know, troubling <laughs> when we're doing a show <laughs> where we're supposed to talk about the movies, and we hope that the movies give us material to kind of, to go on. Um, yeah. So, are we ready for spoilers? I feel like we are. I feel, I feel yeah, like... Yeah, we can, yeah, launch yeah. into spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the whole thing is basically the, 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 the mother... Because you couldn't have a kid, joined a cult, and the cult gave her the ability to have kids. Um, and the the, the rule was though is that the last child she has when it becomes seven years old will have to be given over to the cult and essentially given to Satan. Uh, hence the hence the title of the movie. <laughs> and this, this is why like there's six years between the first two kids because the the mother was like, oh, I can't give up this kid. I'm going to have another baby. Therefore, this kid's no longer the last one. Uh, yeah. And that kept going until, of course, she died. Yeah, uh, yeah, because uh, like, uh, it it gets to a certain point where, yeah, she, uh, and I think she's kind of supposed to be, not like you know, super old, but yeah, uh, she's well, on this like death. She she couldn't be that old, really, if she had a kid yeah. like six years ago. <laughs> yeah, and but like, yeah, she's kind of, and, and I think that's why I assume she was like a grandmother or something at first because, like, you know, she's on this deathbed and she looks really, mm. you know, kind of like deathly ill. Um, but yeah, the I think uh, what you, I guess kind of what you find out uh, later is um, there's kind of a uh, the prophecy wasn't exactly accurate. It wasn't so much that they while waiting for a kid that turned seven, but they wanted this specific kid. They like specifically wanted the, mm. the last kid that she ends up having. So yeah, like once she has him, then it's kind of like, all right, we don't really need you anymore. I guess that's where like the sickness and stuff comes in. Yeah. Cause that was a real thing for me is that they take the kid at the end, like they, you know, they actually get the kid and it just cuts to a year later where the families move somewhere yeah. else. And, um, well, that, that- and and that's what I kind of thought was like surprising because I definitely you know wouldn't have expected in a you know a horror movie that's kind of centered around you know family and, and bonding and stuff like I don't think you would expect like oh no they do end up getting the the kid like Joe's you know weird for me about it though is that it didn't feel like it was as devastating to the other characters as it should have been like I felt like they should be on their knees crying that they've just lost their little brother and the son. And instead, it kind of felt like it just cut to a year later or two years later, and they seem fine and just kind of happy. And it's like, and I guess maybe they came to the turn, uh, you know, came to accept the fact that, like, oh yeah, he was saying because by the end he started like you know being creepy and stuff himself. He, you know, he did. He absolutely did. Um, he even started talking at one point when, obviously, yeah. <laughs> which obviously he's not supposed to be doing. It just again, I felt like it never, like, the reactions to some of the stuff in this movie felt a little bit off to me, and I think that was the big one, especially at the end, is that 
can we actually have them reacting to a that the fact that the kid's been taken and also the, the fact that oh yeah he may have actually been the spawn of satan and should we should just let him go <laughs> because yeah. he's, he's an evil little shit um, I feel like it never like developed those things enough where it was like, oh, and then you had the characters react to those things where it was like, oh, shit. Um, we have to consider this. We have like, to like consider that this might be yeah. what's going on. I think the, uh, the father definitely had like a little bit of a reaction because he seemed like he was still going to go after the kid and they were kind of mm. having to like pull him back, be like, no, <laughs> like, give it up. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure you could probably make some type of... Um, I don't know, uh, you know, some type of conclusion. Like, I mean, maybe at that point they're just so scared they want to get the, you know, heck out of there, or, um, you know, maybe they're, you know, you know, just trying to save their own skin, and then they have some type of emotional reaction later. But uh, yeah, that's a fair point, though. It would have been nicer to actually see that kind of. The, uh, the badass writer dude that shows up to save them. He's the one that they go and see who has the information. Oh, yeah. Um. Because in, in the middle of the film, like, someone comes to kill him. And we don't actually get to see if he lives or not. We just see, like, someone's breaking in his door. But at the same time, presumably the cult, of course, who's behind all this, uh, also intentionally kill the son of the, uh, was it, Ustatz, who's, like, the uh, yeah. the, the religious like the guy. the priest yeah. guy, yeah. Um, he, he's, like, been helping the family throughout the film. And there was a weird theme here where he kept saying that they have to pray. Like, because you're a house that doesn't pray, you'll, you'll let Satan yeah. in. <laughs> and I thought that that was going to go somewhere, um, but it never really did. <laughs> it feels a little victim blamey. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, 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 so his son has been helping. He seems to have a crush on, on uh, Rennie. Uh, he is, like, coming back from the writer with some new information. That is the stuff about the fact that it might be the spawn of Satan. And they kind of, like, make him swerve into a truck. But the way it's shot, because like, this sounds like a simple scene that you get in a lot of movies is someone gets hit by a truck. You actually get a shot underneath the truck as the tire goes over his face. Yeah. <laughs> it's brutal it, as shit. Yeah, and it like stays on it. Like I was definitely not expecting because I, I even thought like, oh, maybe I, I, I think, you know, in, in other movies, then you might cut to like him in the hospital in a coma or something like I thought he might still be alive, but. Uh, no, once you actually see him like under the truck or whatever, it's like, oh yeah, there's no way he's coming back from that. And he's the second death as well because the gr- the granny's already dead. She she get oh yeah uh, the ghost or whatever pulled her into the well. Yeah. Uh, so so then she's dead too. Um, and that was and actually a plot thinking... point because the 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 ghost of the granny is actually trying to help them at the end. Like she's holding yeah. the door back against the the undead who are coming to steal the kid. Yeah. I, had, I, I did have a, uh, uh, a question about that, which is, like, uh, uh, do you still drink from that uh, that well? Or is there a way to maybe get that dead bodiness out of it? I wouldn't want to drink from it. I'll say that much. <laughs> I don't really know what, exactly how wells work. Shocking. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, what, like, what do you do in that situation? I mean, are they... Are they actually still using the wells a well though? Like I feel like most, like you know, places don't use I, wells anymore. I mean, I have no idea. I mean, I guess I, I kind of assume so because it seems like yeah. they're in a house that's like in a little bit in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you it's, know, not, it's, it's, it's not in a yeah city or anything like that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> the closest thing it's uh the thing it's closest to is a graveyard. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah, but even even farmhouses in the middle of nowhere have plumbing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not that weird. Although. Think. Although that was another question I, I had, though, because uh, at one point, you know, when the characters go to go to the bathroom, they just pee right on the floor. <laughs> so do they do the, do they have like toilets and stuff? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, actually, <laughs> here's the thing: the movie's set in like 1981, and I only remember that because it says it at the start. There's actually nothing in the movie that really matters that it's 1981. I don't think. Uh, there actually is. Uh, is there? Oh, go on. Oh, wait. Yes. Uh, well, teach I didn't me, really teach know- me, professor. <laughs> teach me your ways. Well, I, I didn't really know this until like I looked some stuff up uh, about it at the end. But I guess this is actually a kind of a prequel to uh, a movie called Satan Slaves in the '80s. So, you you know, at the end, how you know there's that person in the other apartment that uh, you know is talking about the family. Yeah, it's, it's like people from the cult who are the monitor them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess that's like one of the main characters in the. Uh, you know 1980s movie or you know it's supposed to be i don't i don't know if it's the same actress but it's supposed to be like the you know same character well it wouldn't be because the, the actress will be like a lot yeah, older now much older yeah, yeah like she's pretty four years yeah. older yeah um, but that's that's supposed to be the character from the original movie 
you made me watch a prequel to something before we watched the original movie, Tim. Come on now. Come on! <laughs> this is poor well, show. I, I, <laughs> well, I, I think when I had heard about this movie, I I, I think they had said it's like a, a pseudo remake. Uh, that's what I was under the assumption. I knew there was an earlier movie, but which, which I don't know, might be hard to find. I don't know if it's how available it is, but... Um, Wait, so this family goes through all this again with these neighbors? Uh, I have no idea if it's the same family. Okay. I don't. I don't know much about the original movie. I just know uh, it's tied in and kind of right. sets okay. that up. Okay. But that's that's yeah why it, it's uh takes place then. Fair enough. I I thought it was just to get around like cell phones and shit. <laughs> because <laughs> sure, it, it helps. Yeah. I mean, outside of the fact that you know this this time period was a bit more infused with the the fear of the occult, because obviously, I mean, that's why House of the Devil was set. Uh, in the early eighties, because oh yeah, it was it was just the time for it, which is which is yeah. which is fair enough. Um, yeah. So so the only yeah the only it's thing like, yeah the only thing that comes out of the music you know the the the, the, the mom's a musician is that later mm-hmm. on when someone plays the, her records backwards, there's like you know satanic chanting and shit, <laughs> in the <Yeah>. music, <laughs> uh, which obviously you know there's a lot, a lot of buzz about that. Uh, it's one of those things that people talk about. Um, so that that was fine. I I feel like. I feel like there's more that they could have done with the idea of like, oh yeah, because the- I feel like the dad never reacts to finding any of this stuff out, you know. The the dad is a weird character, like you said, he kind of just disappears halfway through the movie and, and comes back. Because I thought I thought yeah. when he came back that we're, the the twist was going to be that he was is in on it, like he is also part of the cult or something. Because there's a scene early on after yeah. at the funeral for his wife, where he's like in the room with all the people uh, praying and chanting and. He's just kind of looking around like this is a bunch of weird stuff. And it plays off as like he's just an atheist and he's not really into any of this. But I thought, oh, more yeah. if he's like satanic though and he's just, he's, he's, he's you know, he's, he's, he's judging them with his eyes because he's, he's like, nah, you're, 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 you're voting for the wrong end of the stick. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he, he, he kind of comes back <laughs> and he also doesn't seem even that shocked that his his uh his mother or or his mother in law is de- dead. Like he kind of because because that <laughs> that happens when he's not around. Yeah. It, it's sure. yeah. it's kind of like a non reaction. Like I say, there's a lot of reactions in this movie that feel very neutered for mm-hmm. what what's going on. Yeah, I mean. Uh... <laughs> Who knows? I mean, yeah, maybe uh, if that's a conscious choice, we're not really hmm. showing uh, as much as they should but uh that's fair uh i'm I'm more concerned like with the i I like the um again kind of like uh i i I would say it probably focuses you know mostly on like you know the younger kids and that i I think i like their relationship and i kind of like the way they view stuff like the um you know kind of uh i think uh who's like the the second youngest is that bondi uh Uh, yes yeah yeah, so like I, I like kind of he's a little more afraid. And he has kind of all this like superstitious fa- fears. Like he heard that, um, you know, he mentions that like, oh, like I heard, you know, uh, when a loved one dies, like you know, the last person to leave the grave, like when they take forty steps, like after that, like they'll rise up or whatever. Um, so I, I think there's like he has like cool like, you know, superstitious uh, stuff like that that he's. Because you know, I, I feel like you know, little kids get more concerned with that. Like they're not like, you know, um, devastated, but they're more like wondering, like, oh, like how does death work, and you know, oh, all this stuff about like you know, ghosts and and everything. Uh, so I, I kind of like the way they're reacting to these kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, probably could use a little more from the older people. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just it's one of those things. It was just one, one, one of the elements that kind of felt. It's, it's probably the, the thing I, I like the least about the movie is just how the reactions to things felt kind of weird throughout. Um, it it really didn't bother me. I, I like because I, I think the story like uh, it keeps me interested like you know the whole way through and uh, like I you know I'm I'm not denying that you're not bringing up good points, but it didn't really affect me the same way when I watched it. Yeah, I think the difference is, is that by the time I got to them going to see the guy and him like telling them about Satanism and stuff, I was like, oh, we're doing these tropes. And by, and by that point, I was just seeing how it's slotted into the formula as opposed to what it's doing that's different or interesting. And that, you know, that just kind of... Yeah. From that point on, I was I was just kind of half in. I mean, you know, I had one foot in, one foot out. 
and it never really <laughs> quite like grabbed me back in again and in, in, okay. in the way that i would have wanted it to um yeah but you know it, it's a shame but it, it just kind of it was just kind of how i felt as i was watching it. i i i never felt like totally engrossed in what was happening there, there was a few moments early on where it was trying to like i say i liked the relationship between the kids um and the rest of the characters were fine you know i, I you know it, it does a good job at the start of like making you like most of the kids in some way or other because you have the older son who's 16 tony yeah. who like sells his bike he's, he's got like a motorbike and he sells it to, because the family's having money troubles and yeah we see the obviously the sister Rennie. She, she's like trying to look after everyone she's doing her best to like you know try and be the mother figure for the family um so you know you you kind of grow, grow to like most of the characters and you like them well enough um so I, I thought i had a really solid start because of that i thought the first like 20 30 yeah. minutes i was i was mostly into it and then it kind of started to, to go down the, the obvious trappings of the genre of the of the supernatural satanic cult you know claimed a child genre <laughs> which bizarrely yeah. actually is its own <laughs> subgenre at this point there's a, there's enough of them that it actually kind of works. You got Rosemary's Baby, you got Hereditary, you got, what else? There's, there's a few others. There's definitely some more. <laughs> I like the term claim the child. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it is. They've claimed the child. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> the devil's claimed your baby. Um, <laughs> There's like some, uh, again, maybe you can probably say they're a little tropey or whatever, but the uh, a lot of the scares worked for me. Like one early on uh, that I really liked is some, um, you know, they have a big painting of uh, the mother in a hallway and, you know, it's kind of creepy uh, for the kids. So they, you know, take a sheet and then they go to throw it on the painting and then it just kind of stops right before the painting and just drapes over like, you know, a person uh, that's not there. And like, uh, you know, it, it's not like, you know, oh, like the newest thing, like, oh, something we've never seen before. But it was like a really effective, like creepy scene for me. Yep, I think that was one of the ones where I just kind of felt like, okay, sure. <laughs> like, yeah. I got what you're doing. And then, like, yeah, and then, like, all the stuff, like, with, uh, you know, early on, like, you know, uh, you know, they set up that the mother has this bell uh, that she rings for, yeah, you know, anytime, you know, she needs someone to come up. So then there's a lot of stuff that's, uh, you know, uh, you know, comes back, like, with the bell and hearing it. And then, uh, <laughs> actually, I forgot about this. This was kind of weird where um, there's one scene where, <clears throat> um, you know, Rini has um, this dream where, like, you know, the mother wants her and she goes up there, and then there's like, you know, the mother standing up, and then it turns out to be a, a demon, um, you know, which is fine or whatever, but it, it ends up being a dream, and then she wakes up, and then, like, almost the exact same scene yeah, like, the, plays it's out. The, it's the exact same thing, except that the, it's the mother who's standing there, and that's when she dies. She just sort of collapses yeah. into her arms. <laughs> yeah. It, but I just thought it was like so weird because it was like, uh, like I, again, maybe this goes back to your point where people kind of having weird reactions. But like, if you have that dream and then you wake up and the same thing starts playing out, wouldn't you be like a little more cautious, like a little more like, uh, what's going on? I literally just dreamt this. Yes, yeah, uh, these are just some of the things that feel a bit generic to me. Was like, you know the wake up that was yeah. a dream moment, or even when the, one of the kids comes into the room and the bells like just like hovering in the you know in the air and and drops when they open the door yeah. just just things like that I just because the, the whole bell mechanic felt a little bit cliche to me um and even some of the, the, the scares that i was anticipating i, I thought kind of let me down uh what do you call one of those things the viewfinder thing that the kids got where you, you cut oh, through right. the, the images uh because it, it might it, just be viewfinder yeah it's just cycling through the images and he's, he's looking through the thing uh, it's like, oh, here's one of a house, here's one of a, like, a park or whatever. Yeah. And obviously he was going to get to an image that had something in it that was spooky, right? That's what it was building yeah. up to. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was kind of lame how when he got to the image of the spooky thing, it was just like a, it was just the demon standing on a plain black background. I thought, no, yeah. put, put her in a photo, put, put, her, put her, you know, in a location yeah. or something. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that one felt a little down. Uh, like, it, yeah, it seems like they could have done something better with that. Um, I, I do like the, um, you know, like the kids kind of peering over, looking like at the, the graveyard in the window, and then like, you know, seeing like someone stand up. I, I mean, later they found out it was, uh, uh, you know, the Ustad's son, uh, you know, was searching the graves and stuff earlier, but I still he felt that. that Hendra, like, his name was. Hendra, yeah. Uh, but I still felt like that was like a, you know, an effective scene. And, 
Yeah, I'm trying to think. Because uh, it's been about a week now since I've seen it. So I'm trying to think if there's other stuff. But I mean, that like a couple of scenes like that stuck out in my mind. And they worked on me. It feels very... Um, it, it reminded me a lot of like James Wan's uh, stuff. Like, um, you know, uh, again, like kind of like Conjuring Insidious stuff where I, I do feel like that with those movies, they do a lot of jump scares as well, but I'm, you know, I'm not necessarily against jump scares if they, you know, if they are done well and they can be effective, which, uh, yeah, I'm not going to say every thing in this movie was super effective, but most of it did work on me. I think I'm the opposite. I think most of it fell a little bit flat for me. Not in like a super, oh, this is, this is terrible or anything. Just right. Yeah. You know, like, Oh yeah, they're doing this <laughs> thing. Yeah. I've seen this before. They're doing this thing. I've seen it before. It was it was lacking kind of the hook or the or the consistent atmosphere to kind of keep keep me into it, uh, and as a result, I end up yeah. feeling kind of like I say, look warm on it as a whole. So uh, yeah, uh, that's a little fair. Uh, I do like it, it. Does get kind of crazy <laughs> at the end, like once they have basically like uh, you know, I, I mean, maybe they're trying to do much, uh, but. Uh, but I still like that, like they have like, you know, the whole cult is outside and they're kind of, you know, like planting these seeds and it's raising the dead. And then, uh, you yeah, it's getting kind of, kind of crazy. I think, uh, I think that's kind of the thing though. Like if, if you're not in the, in the tone, if you're not like sucked into the movie and you're on the, yeah. on the ride, right. You're not along for the ride. I think when you get to the crazy stuff at the end, that almost like makes it worse say. because you're not into yeah. it. And it feels like it is doing all these random things and it's not earned them. Whereas if you're actually along for the ride and you're kind of engrossed in what's happening, when it starts doing crazy things towards the end, I think I think you're inclined yeah. to be like, oh my god, this is happening. This is happening. and you you're 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 so invested in the characters that when all this crazy stuff starts happening, you yeah. at least hopefully will will react to that and respond to it because it, it's what's happening yeah. to the characters. Whereas if you're not into it and you get to this stuff at the end where it starts doing all these crazy things, I'm like okay, it's just throwing shit at the wall now and seeing what sticks. It's just doing all these crazy yeah. things. Uh, um, I, I guess the one big thing I will definitely agree with you on is the uh, that writer character, that, like, a cult guy. Mm-hmm. It, that definitely did feel like a, a big, you know, uh, you know, like a ex machina kind of, you know, thing that, yeah, that it, it felt a little too easy. And then when he shows up in the end, it's like, all right, yeah, that's pretty convenient. Like, it, it didn't bother me super much, uh, uh, you know, because I was really into everything else that was going on. But, yeah, I'll agree that that wasn't uh, the best. Yeah. Um, I think if you want a, a supernatural horror movie about a bigger sister taking care of her younger siblings, I'd recommend Veronica, which we reviewed a while ago. Um, yeah, Veronica was really good. Spanish film. That's one where the, the actual mm-hmm. supernatural plot is not even that great on its own. It's just that the, the characters are so good and the, her t- protecting our, our, our siblings is so good that it really works from that side of things and then hereditary yes. i think was a better film about the occult and that kind of you know this this kid belongs to satan kind of thing yeah i i did really like the characters in this but i i wonder if maybe it's at a bit of a disservice because there's so many i don't know if it's maybe a little harder to focus on them because like uh yeah i agree with you like you probably get the most from the two youngest uh and and their relationship but like i still like the other characters but yeah it doesn't really feel like you get that much from them Mm. yeah uh so no i I think that'll pretty much do it so we can rate the film um timmy if you've got a got a number in mind (laughs) <clears throat> yeah uh i mean well obviously <laughs> I, I liked it uh you know a, 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 a you know a bit more than you so i'm assuming it'll probably be pretty different scores or at least a, l- a little bit of a for, gap but I'm for gonna... a change because we, we have been on a bit of a streak of r- rating we, things yeah. very closely <laughs> so yeah so so it is nice but i'm actually going to give it an, an, an eight uh because i yeah i was like really impressed from it maybe yeah i didn't really have much uh thoughts going in other than a few people were saying it was good but like yeah i i still wasn't really going in thinking it was going to be amazing but yeah it just worked for me i you know i thought it had a good atmosphere it was, you know pretty creepy uh and again i mean maybe um i say this too much uh but i just man i just love when there's like almost no cgi in a movie like when you're when you're doing stuff and there's just like no 
you know, sh- like shitty, you know, CGI demon popping out in the corner going like, <laughs> I don't know what. Uh, but yeah, eight for me. I really liked it. Yeah, I'm not going to go anywhere close to that high. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to go with a 5.5. 5. Oh, wow. Um, th- th- that's, Surprised. Th- this was closer to, to middle for me. Uh, I was tempted to go with a 6, but I, I don't think I quite I, I can, because I, I think a 6 I still kind of enjoy, whereas I think by the end of this, I ultimately felt enough problems that I didn't, don't, I don't think, you know, I, I remember it fondly because of that. Interesting. Okay. So, I, I gotta admit, I'm a little surprised. I wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't uh, say that you are wrong <laughs> or or that, uh, you know, make fun of your opinion, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm like, i I'm not surprised that you didn't love it, but I'm surprised, uh, yeah, that you would go that low. But that's that's fair. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think for me, it just it felt a bit more, I guess, generic. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, it, it felt like a generic Hollywood haunted house movie. Um, mm-hmm. It didn't do enough to stand out from that. You know, compared to the other Indonesian film we did, uh, May the Devil Take You, I thought that was more fun. I thought that had more things that made it feel unique. Um, even if it was yeah. like you know cribbing on a couple of things like Evil Dead or whatever, but it had more personality. Whereas this one for me felt a bit more plain, it just straightforward. I can yeah, and then I can see that. That's fine. Yeah, which would have been fine if yeah. if, the, if I thought the scares were really good or if I thought the plot was really good. But I don't think I did. I, I think it was just like everything was kind of serviceable, and I, I outlined the problems that I felt so. But there you go, 5.5 5 and an 8. So that's, cool. that's the most we've disagreed in a while, I think. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's one of those hard ones, though, where, like, I, I feel like it'd be easier, though, if you are like, like, what are you talking about? This is a horrible, like, piece of shit. Like, you know, it's even that it's not much of a, you know, because I, I can still see your points. I, I feel like, you know, but it's a little hard to argue because I think they are valid. It's just one of those ones where, Ultimately, it just comes down to like, well, it worked for me. It didn't really work for you. Pretty much, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that that has been Satan's slaves, and this has been an episode of Screams After Midnight. You can let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments below if you've seen it. You can like and subscribe, all that stuff. That helps us out a lot with YouTube's algorithms and stuff. Of course, you can rate us on the iTunes or your podcast app of choice as well if you listen to the audio feed. Uh, if you want to support us even more than that, though, you can go to patreon.com slash TV and you can support us over there for as little as a dollar per month uh, and help us out in lots of different ways. So go do that. Uh, but otherwise, that's us. Get us on Twitter, at Screams Midnight. Uh, that's important. Follow us on the Twitters. <laughs> you can get me, at Wibble89. You can get Tim, at Tim Vergulish. Uh, they're on the screen if you're watching the video. If not, then go watch the video <laughs> and you can see what the Twitters are. <laughs> if, if you don't know how to spell anything that I just said. Um, but that is, that is us. So thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies, guys. And we will see you next time.